Now talking Texas men's tennis with head coach Michael Center. Does it, by the way, 13 years, right? I mean, it's, 13 years. It's kind of zoomed by for you. It's hasn't flown it? by. It really has. <laughs> uh, and and uh, it's it's young guys like the pride of. Correct me if I got it wrong, Soren. Aarhus, Denmark. That's right. Did I did I get it right? Yeah, that's that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> for me, it was perfect. Better than us. Yeah. <laughs> Soren Hess Olson, our, our guest during this and. You know, we, we, we joke about that, but there's there's always that uh, adjustment to make when you hail from outside the United States, in this case, from Denmark as well. What's, what was the biggest adjustment once you came over to the States? It was funny. I, I'd never been to the States before um, when I got here. And I think the biggest difference is how much sports means to the people over here. Um, the whole thing about combining education and, and and athletics is just a, a thing that you don't see in the rest of the world. Um, it's, it's so professional, uh, the facilities, the resources here is just, I can't find that anywhere else. And I think that's the biggest change. So all the changes were, were positive. And of, of course I had to get used to the culture as well, uh, speaking English all the time, especially in the classroom. But I, I think I adjusted pretty fast. Now, you mentioned that uh, actually your wife knew him before you did? Well, Chris was a St. Stephen's student, and my wife works in admissions at St. Stephen's, so she actually had the privilege of interviewing Chris prior to his uh, enrollment at St. Stephen's. So I knew a little bit about Chris uh, from her prior to even watching him play tennis. I have a feeling there's a story here. How did it go in the interview process? Well, uh, pretty early in the morning, about 8 a.m., and you know she's asking me, she knew I was a tennis player, and she starts asking me how I feel about handling that kind of tough schedule. St. Stephen's a pretty tough school academically, and then I have the tennis academy. She asked me about if I liked school, and I just told her I don't like school straight up. And she says, probably shouldn't tell that to the person that's interviewing you <laughs> to get into school, and I said, I don't know. I maybe said I'm sorry, or I just said at least I was honest. I said something, so probably wasn't my best, not my best first interview of my life. In spite of all that, you still managed to land at St. Stephen's as well. What did you see in, in Chris when he was at St. Stephen's, Michael? Well, his first thing you notice is his athleticism. He's a really good athlete, um, good basketball player, uh, can hit all the shots on the court, uh, had a lot of success uh, in the juniors playing doubles, watched him in the 16s. Uh, playing the semifinals of our national tournament. Uh, you know, there are three guys not even going to school pretty much. They're training with USTA and Chris on the court. So I knew that he could compete at a really high level and um, that he would d develop, and, and that's exactly what happened. Now, your club coach was an All-American at UT, correct? Was that a factor in why you ultimately chose Texas? No question. Jean Simone, All-American here. Coach knows him very well has some good stories. But, you know, he told me about everything that this place has to offer. I'm from here, so I, I kind of have a general idea. But um, there's no question that Jean's contact with Coach and that communication really helped that process for me. And I don't think I would be here if it wasn't for their relationship, Jean and, and Coach Centers. We've talked about how, uh, how interesting it is to recruit internationally. And, it, I mean, it, it's a different... It's a different ball game, isn't it, than, sure. than recruiting domestically, and especially in the state of Texas, isn't it? Well, we, we primarily we recruit the state of Texas to start with, and we recruit the U.S. and and we will go abroad at times. And and you know, a guy like Soren, uh, not only is a very good player, but he's a very good student, and he comes from a country where English is spoken frequently. So he met all the qualifications that we would need here. You know, he we have to take a TOEFL exam. It was something that was very easy for him. It might be very difficult for someone who grows up in Argentina or, or Spain, for example. Uh, so he really met all the criteria and is obviously an excellent player. He's fit in, been a great team player, but um, he's thrived really uh, on the court and, and in the classroom. Now, your teammates have referred to you as the Danish Viking. Is, yeah. that, is that correct? Yeah, I heard that last week, yeah. Do you like that? Are you okay with that? I think it's when I, yeah, we always called Vikings in Denmark. So I, I think of this big, brutal guy as just a fighter, and I like to be seen as a Viking on the court, not off the court necessarily. You also write for TexasSports.com. You blog a bit. You know, <laughs> right. What's, you know, what, what's some of the, what, are, what are some of the things you discuss in your blog? 
you know, it originally started as just kind of a, you know, actually John Wiegand did it before, who, who does, you know, who com does the commentary on some of the matches. He started it, and then I saw it one time, and I said, I want to do that. And, you know, it started off as me just kind of trying to be creative and make some jokes and figured only the team would read it, but it would be just kind of a fun way for me to, and maybe my parents, you know, you know the all 12 people that would read it or whatever, but... But now it's a it's a good little update thing, and I uh, try and uh, the, especially the really intense matches like Michigan this year and TCU. I really try and keep them and keep you know, everyone who's gets on Texas Sports on the tennis page to try and keep them updated. But it's there's a lot of jokes and a lot of creative language in there. You haven't had to have exercise any editorial control. You know, you know, honestly, I'll get calls from opposing coaches from across the country saying I really enjoyed Chris's blog <laughs> because I feel like. I really know what happened in the match, and he, he details it. Let's not sure he's one of the smartest kids, not only in our program but at the University of Texas. This guy is a is a genius student, and he's a great writer. And so when people read his stuff, it, he's kind of got a little following, not only amongst the Texas tennis family but across the country, looking forward to his. Particularly when we win those matches, it, yeah. it's it's even more fun <laughs> to, to read them. And you've been playing at number one uh, single since uh, February of 2012. Been ranked, and you're ranked 40th. Does it feel like that? I mean, do you do you feel uh, the, the the challenge of that of of being nationally ranked? Um, not really. I think that's just something that comes with the experience here. Um, of course, sometimes you think about the rankings, but I think the best thing is just. Playing each match and then the result, you know, the the rank will just be a natural result of your results on the court. So I, 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 in my opinion, the guy playing six is just as big a responsibility as the guy playing one. So I'm I'm just contributing to the team as as much as everybody else. Now you're also described as being the vocal leader of this group. Is is that a fair assessment, Michael? Chris likes to talk. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a fair assessment. Sometimes it's like that water that's coming out of the hose and you can't quite turn it off. You know, it keeps coming and it keeps coming and you keep trying to. So, he, yeah, I would say vocal leader would be an appropriate uh, term for Chris because uh, he can carry a conversation with just about anybody at any time. Was that always the case with you? I think most people that have ever met me would know that I like to talk. But, um, you know, you just, after being here for a while, you kind of, you obviously you start to pick up on some things and you learn some tricks and you know, you learn how to train and you learn how to go to school and take care of classes and take care of the things that you can take care of. So I just kind of try and pass that along and I probably pass along a lot of other things when I just ramble all the time, but I do my best to try and help the, the younger guys out. Do you notice the much difference between him from his freshman season to sworn sophomore campaign? Not just on the sure. court, but but him as a, as a person and how he's adapted and adjusted to everything. Oh, no doubt. He he's a very focused young man. I mean, he came here with a purpose, and he came here to become a great tennis player, and try to become a professional tennis player, and do very well in school, and uh, and get his degree. And so there was not a lot of. Uh, wiggle room, so to speak, on like, I'm here to get this done. And when you come from, uh, you know, you come from Denmark and you're adjusting to everything and the academics and one guy might, hey, let's go out, let's do this and let's do this. I think it was a little bit of a shock to him at first. Like, I'm here to play tennis and go to school and I have a girlfriend back home and that's the way it's going to be. And I think he's kind of embrace the entire environment now a little bit more. I think it's a little bit easier for him. He's more relaxed and um, and yet he's still driven in trying to to accomplish his goals but I think he's he's kind of uh, I wouldn't call him a, a, a total uh, Texan yet but he's getting close to it. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get you to tell the story of your trip to New York because you're there with the USTA, ITA uh, national doubles. T tell folks a little bit about that, that event and what you went through and the experience of being in New York. Well, we, def we weren't really supposed to go because we didn't do enough, we didn't win enough matches, we didn't win the necessary tournaments to go. And then the day before the tournament starts, Coach Center calls me about 9.30 at night and says, Chris, do you want to play national indoors? And I say, yes. And look, why are you asking me this question? He says, Oklahoma and their two teams couldn't couldn't get the flight to get out because there was bad weather through there and uh, so I called Dave and Dave I don't even, I, Dave wasn't in the house at the moment so I called him and said we're going to indoors tomorrow you know in the morning early in the morning and we show up 
and our kind of theme throughout that tournament was that we weren't really supposed to be here, so let's kind of play without any pressure, and let's just let's really go for it, especially in this first match. We got a bye, so we got to play a little bit later in the day, and we were, really on, we were literally on the court saying, it, when we missed balls, we got to say, it's okay, we're not supposed to be here. <laughs> like, so just, just keep playing. It was, it was an easy way for us to keep a positive mindset throughout, throughout the tournament. What was the biggest adjustment between your freshman and sophomore year, understanding and taking everything in as a student and as a student athlete, always, always hear time management and things like that being what they are as well, but also adjusting to customs and the country and all of that sort of thing? You know, I, after a year here, I was kind of used to everything. I was used to how the school works and how tennis works. And I, I remember I had a talk with Coach earlier this year about just enjoying the process a little bit more and just kind of em embracing the experience because it's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience here. I only have four years and suddenly they just they pass by really fast. Uh, so I, I feel like I've gotten more relaxed on the court. Um, I feel more comfortable where I am right now in the classroom, on the court, playing matches, everything, traveling as well. So, so it's, I, it's, it's a pretty natural development going from being a freshman to being a sophomore. Just kind of just, I know where I am. I, I know how everything is. And that just makes me more relaxed. Alex Hilliard, Ben Chen, uh, you know, uh, Daniel Whitehead, seniors. I mean, you're, you're part of that group and part of this legacy that you're, you're trying to leave. What, what, what does it mean to be with those guys and what you as seniors are trying to accomplish here? Oh, I mean, being with those guys is huge because I've known them for so long. So these guys are my best friends and they've been my friends since I was 13 years old. And, it's, and I've lived with all these guys for several years in a row. And, um, you know, the, the legacy that we try and leave is, is a group of people that wanted the one of the best for the team in, in any given circumstance. And, and we tried to instill that in, in the people that are, that are coming up behind us because that was what is, was instilled with us by the people before us. And uh, there's a certain level of sacrifice that goes into being on a team, and we want to make sure that that quality is instilled in, in every player that's still on the team. What is the most satisfying part of being a student athlete at the University of Texas? It's the fact that I have so many resources I can use. Uh, I have great coaches, great facilities. Uh, I have mentors and tutors to, to help me with the schoolwork. Um, so the most satisfying thing is that I have everything I need. So it's just up to myself to use those resources as best as I can.